Hi everybody and welcome to Stitching Stories. This month we're going to be making a bendy snake. He's cute and you can bend him around and make him an accessory or a toy or whatever you like. So I wanted to warn everybody that this month it, the video is a little bit long because I'm going to teach you how to use and how to make a pattern. If you have no interest in making a pattern, that's okay. You can fast forward through that section and just draw the shape of the snake on your fabric. If you want to learn how to make your own pattern, jump right in and we'll make one together. All right, guys, we're going to make a pattern. And to make a pattern, we're going to need some graph paper, a ruler or a straight edge, and an eraser and a pencil. Our snake is going to be 15 inches and I don't have 15 inches of paper. So I am going to take two pieces and I'm just going to put them next to each other, tape them together so they don't move. So I don't have any tape handy and a lot of times I can't find it when I do need it, but I do have some stickers. So I'm just going to use a couple stickers. I'm going to make a diagonal line because that'll give me some more room. I'm going to start at one end and go all the way down. That's 12 inches. And quick math question, because sewing involves math. 12 plus what is 15? Three inches. So there, we have our 15 inch line. You, our snake isn't going to be super wide. He's only going to be about hmm, three quarters of an inch wide. So that means what do we say? Half of three quarters. I know this is a lot of math for our pattern. So three quarters and we want to center it because we want our this line to be down the center of our snake. We can't divide three and half very easily, but we can do our fractions and make it six eighths. So the center would be half of that, which is three eighths. So you can go any inch on the roller and then I'm going to go three eighths on one, three eighths of an inch on one side and then three eighths of an inch on the other. And then just to double check myself, yep, six to six and three quarters. And I'm going to go down at the other end of the snake and do the same thing. Then we're going to, and this line doesn't have to necessarily go all the way to the top of your snake because we're going to be making that into our head. Need to go down this side of it and see marking it up here and down here made sure that I kept my lines straight. Here's the thing. This is the end of our snake. You can make your snake have a round tail and this is where it gets totally unique to you. I want mine to have a pointy snake tail. So I'm going to give him a point and I'm going to bring that sideline down to the point. There we go. And up here at the head. Hmm. So I want my snake to kind of have a diamond shaped head. So I'm going to start off with, he's got to have a mouth and I don't want that too pointy. So we're going to do that. And how big do we want our head? He's 15 inches long. So, hmm, do we think that's big enough for a head? One inch? I think I want mine to look kind of silly. So I'm going to give him kind of a bigger head. I'm going to make it come down to about one and a half inches. Like that's, and all of these lines, you can make as many lines as you want to help you draw your snake. So I want his head to come out farther than his body. What do we think? Oh, that's a, I thought that was going to look cartoony, but that doesn't actually look too big for the snake. All right. So there is my snake. Next thing is to cut him out. Now, remember your seam allowances. So you can cut him out with some extra, or you can cut on these lines. I like to cut on these lines and then I put the seam allowance on the fabric, but that is as easy as that. 
Um, making a pattern is really just drawing a picture. If you're really confident with your drawing skills, you can do this right on the fabric. But if you want to keep doing the same shape uh, or you need pieces that match up cut out of different pieces of fabric, then sometimes it's nicer to do it on paper and then you can repeat the exact same shape and the exact same measurements. In my supplies list, I tell you guys to have at least a quarter yard of fabric. You probably really don't need a quarter yard, but we want to make sure that we have a length of fabric that is 15 inches long and four inches across. Just like with the fur, but a little less noticeable, our fabric has a grain. So paper, we could do our, ours diagonally, but if we do it on the fabric diagonally, the fabric will be more stretchy. And we don't necessarily want that because we want it to keep the stuffing and the pipe cleaners inside. So we want to go either this way or this way. And you can tell that by looking at the threads in the fabric. So you want the length of your snake to go the same way as the threads, which I can't do on this side because see his tail will hang off. Which is why I'm glad I have this weird little shaped bit over here and I can do this. I got a marker. This is one of my drawing markers, but you can really use any Sharpie or whatever you like. Because no one's going to see these lines. They're going to be where you're sewing. Now we're still using small pattern pieces so we can just lay them on top and trace. Once we start doing bigger pieces, we will probably have to use pins and pin them down. But this pattern is pretty small, so we can just sketch it out. So there is our pattern on our fabric. We're going to save this so we can make another snake. And now remember, it's a, these are our sewing lines. So we need to remember our seam allowance. If you think you'll need a visual reminder, just make another line out here to remind yourself you don't want to cut away this fabric. You want to make sure that you leave your seam allowance. And I'm going to go all the way around and do that. Okay. That outside line doesn't have to be perfect because remember, after we sew it, we're going to trim that seam allowance even smaller. I'm going to use my big scissors and cut and then carefully not to cut whatever's under the fabric because in this case I have a towel. All right, there we go. We have our snake with our sewing lines. And like I said, remember you have two pieces. Now some of you already experimented a little bit with our last project using two different fabrics. And you can do that if you want the top of your snake to be green and the bottom of your snake to be white or gold. You could do that. Just layer a green piece on top of a gold piece or a white piece when you cut them. But you want the pieces to be exactly the same or as close to exact as you can get. And then we're going to sew them. So you guys already know the deal with threading a needle and sewing. So I'm going to jump to that part. Okay. So I wrap my thread. I've got my snake. We're going to be doing just a running stitch, which you guys have done a number of times before. We're going to start about an inch or two below the head and I'm going to go up around the head. Now remember, and I'm going to say this a couple times, once we go around, you're going to stop and leave a two inch space. Matter of fact, to remind yourself, we'll give ourselves a start line and an end line. That's way less than two inches. Our end line should be down here. And I'm even going to write stop on it to remind myself that I want to stop because we need an open spot so we can turn our snake right side out because right now he's inside out. So I'm going to start by our start line and go up. And just in case anybody needs a refresher, we go up and down and up and down. So I'm going to keep doing this and we're going to talk about some animal books. So this month I decided to talk about animal books and it was really hard to figure out exactly which animal books I wanted to talk about because there are so many and there's so many different kinds. In some of them 
the animals act like humans. In others, they're the best friends of the people that are telling the story. And they're definitely characters and part of it, but you never know what they're thinking. Only how they help or hinder or act with your main characters. Um, sometimes they're a best friend. Sometimes they can be a scary part of the story. And then in other stories, um, the animals are magical beings that are part real and part fantasy. Um, Harry Potter has Hedwig the Owl, but there's also hippogriffs and skel selkies and all sorts of things like that. And then there are animals that act like animals, but they are the ones that tell the story. And you see humans through their eyes. So there are so many different kinds. I finally narrowed it down to the first one had to be one by my fa one of my favorite authors. So Gordon Corman's Swindle is a really cool book. And it's not necessarily an animal book in a traditional sense. But it is the first time that Griffin Bing and his group of friends, Ben, Logan, Melissa, Antonio, Savannah, and Darren ever run into Luther. Luther is a lovable, a little bit unstable, and sometimes vicious Doberman. And he's the guard dog of the bad guy who swindled Griffin out of a million dollar baseball card. That's right, a million dollars. And Griffin found it. It was his. It was his ticket to not having to sell his house and move away, to buying a computer for his friend, acting lessons for another. This was all of their dreams. And this grown up took advantage of them simply because they were kids. So in Swindle, you get to hear about the plan Griffin comes up with to get that card back and that adventure. But it is by far not the last adventure that Griffin, his friends, and Luther the Doberman have together. The next book is Zombert. Zombert, <laughs> it is another mystery, but it's a very different mystery. Uh, one night, Melly and her friend Danny were out walking, and they find a scraggly, smelly stray cat behind the Yumco food factory. Melly loves animals, and she decides to adopt Bert. She names him Bert, but... Bert isn't like other cats. Even after she takes him home and gets him cleaned up and offers him food, he's just different. He decapitates all of her stuffed animals. She leaves a wake of stuffed corpses around her room. Could Bert be a zombie cat? And if he is, what's been going on at the Yumco Food Company? Can Bert, Melly, and Danny figure out what's going on. All right, Million Shades of Grey, not a mystery. But for those of you that like historical fiction or maybe are interested in Vietnam, this is a beautiful story. It's about a boy named Tin. He's 12 and he's the youngest elephant handler in his village. He loves his elephant lady. She's his best friend. They could spend all day together. But his life is not destined to stay calm. No, in 1973, the Viet Cong invade his village and everything changes. At first, Tin is held hostage, but he has to risk escaping. If he doesn't, it's not only his life that could be in danger, it could be his beloved elephant, Lady, and the rest of her herd. So he escapes with Lady. Can he and Lady keep the rest of the elephants and themselves alive and safe in a very dangerous jungle in the middle or really the end of the Vietnam War? Read Million Shades of Grey to find out. It's an awesome book. From History to Fantasy, Secret of Selkie Bay. Selkies are shapeshifters. They look like seals, but when they shed their skin, they appear human. And rumors around the bay are that the Sullivan sister's mother could be a Selkie. And when she suddenly disappears, her daughters are left wondering if she reclaimed her seal form and left them forever. The sisters work to get their family together, to move on, but they still have to wonder, where did mom go? Why didn't she come back? 
Are Selkies real? In this mystery, they find a hidden city of Selkies. And there's even more secrets around the bay. That the World According to Humphrey is a series of books by Betty Burney. And they all star Humphrey, a hamster who lives in room 26, which is Mrs. Brisbane's classroom. In Imagination According to Humphrey, he ta tackles capturing his imagination to help him learn to write stories. It's not always easy, but he has a classroom full of friends, and Mrs. Brisbane has a ton of tips for exercising your imagination and for writing. I know you guys have incredible imaginations, and I think that you could write some amazing stories. If you want some tips, check out Im Imagination According to Humphrey, Wild Rescuers, Guardians of the Taigan is the first book in the Wild Rescuer series. This series was written by the creator of Dogcraft series on YouTube. Stacy was raised by wolves, but she isn't a fan of humans. From her experience, humans are, well, pretty selfish, very destructive, and violent too. She and her pack of six wolves work together to do their best to protect the forest where they live and all the animals who live there. So each of them work together and depend on each other to pull off some very wild rescues. If you like adventure and maybe some animals that can talk back to you, you might check out Wild Rescuers. <laughs> make sure I don't want to make puckers in my fabric. And I'm going to go back a stitch because I want to make sure that I have the edge secured. And let's see. I'm gonna do a stitch to the side and go back up through it. And this one, because I'm right on the edge of where I'm gonna stuff it, I'm actually gonna go through again and do like a really strong knot. The seam allowance that I left when I drew it. Let's see, I'll take out our trusty roller. And I don't know if you guys can see this because my roller is transparent, but it's almost a half inch. And we really don't need that much of a seam allowance. So I'm gonna take my bigger scissors and I'm gonna trim a bit of that off. I'm gonna trim it to maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more than that. Just because I don't want all this fabric inside of my snake. Now, turn him out inside, well, turn him right side up because he's already inside out. So we don't want our seams to show. Stuff that tail inside and keep poking it and poking it. Now, if you happen to have chopsticks at home, they're really good for helping. I'm going to use my pencil, but chopsticks are even better because they're a little pointy but not super pointy so they won't break your fabric if you don't push too hard but they'll help you and you can use the eraser end of your pencil don't want to use the pointed end because you'll stab yourself or your snake and it'll take a few minutes now for this last little bit I am going to use the point and this is where chopsticks are great because pencils are not the best, but I don't have any chopsticks around today. You just kind of want to push a little harder to get that pointed end if you did a pointed end on your snake. So we did the tail, now we've got to do the head. Just like the tail. This one might be a little harder, a little easier, kind of depends on the shape of the head and how much fabric. I say it might be a little bit harder because you have to stuff all this fabric through. But at the same time, we don't have to worry about a point. So we pull and use our pencil to push. Ooh. Keep pushing. Oh, I'm at the head. I can tell I'm at the head. So I gotta get. And see, you gotta work it around. Some of you guys with thin little fingers might even be able to put your finger through and help.
push out the shape, my fingers is, are not going to go through this thin little stick. I thought I made that head so, so big. It doesn't look so big now that it's all sewn. So there is our sneak. But he's not really all that bendy yet. So we are going to get some fiber fill. Now I know you're going, that's a tiny little head. That's a lot of fiber fill. But I want the head of my snake to be pretty solid. So I'm going to squish a lot of this in a really big mount. Squish is very tiny. And you're going to take the open area and just kind of stuff it in until the head is full of fiber fill. So, so if like me you did not secure that first thread quite well enough it's not a big problem we're gonna take a stitch inside the seam allowance where you won't see it and this time I'm gonna make really sure that it's not gonna pull out because I'm gonna loop it around and then I'm gonna do a blind stitch and then instead of keeping going because I still need that open I'm gonna come back over and go straight up so kind of I just did a little box and through again and I'm gonna make the knot and like on the other side I will make it a stronger knot now there's a little bit of thread and it's showing through. My snake is going to have a little dark spot there. But that's alright. It shows that he's handmade. I'm going back to get my little pieces of stuffing. Put it into the snake. And again, this is where your chopstick or your pencil. I'm going to take a little more and stuff it in. And you're going to keep stuffing until the head of your snake is as Full and as fluffy or as firm as you want it to be. What do you guys think? I think he's pretty stuffed. Before I do the pipe cleaners, I want to do the eyes. Now I've decided that I want to sew my eyes with embroidery floss on this one. On my first, you can see I sewed some beads on. And we've talked about sewing beads on before. You guys know how to do that. And you can add beads. I use kind of big Bubbly, bubbly green eyes for him um, but you could use flat beads or you could use small buttons or you can do what I'm going to do and get some embroidery floss and I'm going to give my green snake some red eyes. I'm using the same needle that I was sewing with so embroidery floss comes in six ply or thread skeins I have two threads here together and that will give me a little bit of a thicker floss to embroider with but you thread the needle the same way it's a little harder because there's two threads but you thread it the same way so two threads going through there now unlike other times well you know what not unlike other times I'm gonna take it so I have two threads and I'm gonna knot them back here, which means I'm actually sewing with four. So I've got two on this side and two on this side. And that will just make it easier for me to cover more area of the fabric at one time. And now every other time we've wanted our thread not to show. But this time we want it to show because we're using it as a decoration. So I'm gonna figure out where I want my eyes I'm just going to put a little dot to kind of keep me and you can make them any shape that you like. I'm just going to kind of loop in. Now there's a little knot here. I just want to kind of fold it up and I'm going to go underneath of it and come back up. So you guys see I went down and up like the beginning of my running stitch and now I'm going down and up right right next to it and embroidery this is called a satin stitch and I'm gonna do it again 
and my stitches are super, super close together because I want to cover all the green fabric and make a red eye out of this thread. So there you guys can see it from another angle. I'm going underneath the knot and coming, oops, and coming up right in almost the same spot because I want to cover up the knot and make an eye for my snake. And I'm gonna keep doing that in this area until the eye is as big as I want it. Let me see. I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna go a little bit farther down I want to make my eye bigger. I think I made my eye too small. So I'm going to make some longer stitches. There we go. Now to this other side. I could make a little knot, cut my thread, and then start again on the other side. But this is full of fiber felt, and I'm using the same thread. So I'm just going to go through his head. I went then I know that my eyes are kind of in a straight line because my needle is and the same thing. I'm going to try to make them around the same size. I'm going to go down. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to do the same thing I did over there. I'm going to make them smaller and then a little bit bigger. There we go. And that's pretty good. All right. Now to knot off, I'm going to take my needle and I want to catch some of the red thread. I'm going to go there and then back and then I'm going to do the same thing one more time. Go under and actually I think I'm going to go through it heading down. And then I'm going to try to snip as close as I can to the eye without cutting any of the threads in the eye. And there we've got two. So I'm going to take a little bit more floss and put it in the tail of my snake. And the reason I'm doing that is because pipe cleaners have a wire in them. And I really don't want the wire poking out the end of my snake. So I want something kind of cushy at the end. There we go. So now my end has a little bit of stuffing and my head has some stuff. Okay. So we have our pipe cleaners and we have our snake. So we want our pipe cleaners to go from the neck to the tail. And my pipe cleaners actually are pretty long enough to do that. If they weren't, what you could do is kind of overlap them and make it a little stronger and then twist them together. I still want to twist them together. I have four. Because I want my body of the snake to be, well, I don't want him to be that thin. I want him to have some muscles. So we're going to take them and then we're just going to take all four and keep twisting. Keep twisting around. Once we have all of our pipe cleaners done. This is actually going to be easier than the fiber fill. We're going to find our open area. And one end, if the wires are getting stuck in your fabric, it might happen if you have a looser weave fabric. Just fold them up so it's a little softer on the end. Our opening, we're gonna push that in. And see, this is why we also didn't want a lot of fabric in our sink, because if we had a lot of fabric in our sink, we wouldn't have been able to get our pipe cleaners. Now. We have our two inch opening. Our pipe cleaners are bendable, so don't worry about bending them. We're gonna bend it. I'm gonna fold those ends down too. And push them in this end. This one's a little harder. Easier than the fiber fill, because they're stiff. Harder than the, than the tail end, because we don't have as much space. We're gonna just keep Pushing them in. Okay. 
wiggle it around. And there we go. Our sneak is stuffed and bendy. But we still have to close our open spot. Do you guys remember the blind stitch from our last project? We're gonna get our thread, thread our needle, and remember our blind stitch is used to close up things that we've stuffed, like our backpack pet or our snake. It can also be used to hem or make cuffs on sleeves. Anywhere where you are putting kind of two edges together and you don't want the thread to show. I go down here in the seam allowance. And if you're worried about the knot showing here, you can even go in here between. This is between the outside fabric and your seam allowance. But you want to go as close to the edge as you can. You're going to go up. And I've got a pretty big knot in there. Remember, for the blind stitch, we go straight across to the other edge and we make just a little straight stitch inside the fold and come up. And you want to pull your thread. There you go. And then we're going to go again across. We're going perpendicular to the stitch we just made across the seam and another stitch down in the fold of the other side of the opening and pull it tight again perpendicular to our original seam and go back in the fold I am done. So now I'm going to go in that fold again and come back. And there is my knot. And oops. Snip my threads. Now, I did. Where I messed up earlier, I left a little bit of black thread, but that's okay. I'm going to put my needle in my spool of thread so I do not lose it. And put a cap on my thread snips so we don't poke anybody with them. And we have an awesome snake. And you can bend your snake in any kind of shape. You can bend them into a pretzel. <laughs> Let's see. I think I can make him do a headstand. Anyway, it's, it's... Coil him around my finger. Now, mine doesn't quite go posable all the way to the end because I put stuffing down there. If you would rather, you can leave this stuffing out and have your pipe cleaners go all the way end to the tail end and even his tail can do a curly cue. All right guys, I hope you enjoy the sneak. We have a couple more projects before the summer. Next month we are going to learn how to do a lining and put in a zipper and we are going to make a really cool bag where you can stash some of your treasures. So I will see you again next month on Stitching Stories. Have a good time. All right, I'm almost there. If I tuck it this way, I can still see there's a little bit of an opening. Let's see, so I have to go down to there.